Well, not right now, because it's... Uh, sports reporter and, of course, your key analyst for tonight's game. for tonight's game. Yes, thank you, Fabs. Um, yes, we've had a long wait, almost two years since the competition actually started. And uh, the two teams tonight are going to be itching to get a victory. They've had a lot of time without football. They've come back into it. And for a lot of the players, the young players in the two teams, it might be their last opportunity to impress this evening. We've got Ben Strevens, the Eastley manager, here tonight. Could some of the players force their way into the team for next season? Bournemouth, they're going to be in the playoffs this season. Next season, possible Premier League team. Are some of these players, is it going to be on the mind of some of these players? We'll see. Now, of course, the weather looks like it's set to hold up. There's no rain over the schedule that has occurred in the last couple of games. So let's just take a quick look at the semi-final highlights. But of course, now we do seem to be having a couple of issues with the semi-final highlights, so we'll just skip to that. Um, um, look, the Eastley players are going to be well up for this. They've probably got more of a chance of sneaking into the first team than these Bournemouth players. So. If they play well tonight, look, maybe they could be in with a shout for the playoffs. We don't know. The playoffs start in a couple of weeks. This might be, I, think, I believe this is one of the last games that this team will play this season. So why not go out there and make a name for yourself this evening? Now, of course, Bournemouth, they, they actually come to this game having won the, the a cup just a couple of days ago. They're looking to make it a double in just under a week. What, what would you be saying to
the tournament's opening match. But now, after 48 games, hundreds of goals, and plenty of rearranged fixtures, we finally make it to match uh, 49, the showpiece finale from here at Snow's Stadium in Totten. On the pitch, we've got two young sides, both worthy of a cup final place. And up here in the stand, I'm joined by my socially distanced co-commentator, Benjamin Reese. Benji, we've been waiting ages for this game. We have indeed, Doug. It's a lovely ground to be at. Although, it, under slightly strange circumstances, you may think, play your first games of a cup in September. Cup final wraps up in May. That seems pretty normal, except, of course, September was September 2019. And it has been a year and a half since this tournament first kicked off. It has indeed. Um, in the build-up to the game, uh, you've been having a look at a few key players. Um, so for Bournemouth, you've been looking at Christian Sadie. I have, in a rich vein of scoring form at the moment, four goals in their last three games, including the opener in last week's Central League Cup final victory at St George's Park over Carlisle. A lovely placed low finish from a Ben Greenwood cross. And also you've been looking at Eastley's Ross Flitney, the uh, captain and goalkeeper. Yeah, I know... It Goalkeeper isn't necessarily the uh, the sexy pick, perhaps, but Ross Flitney's got bags of experience, and especially in this competition, made an outstanding penalty save in their semi-final victory over Southampton. Diving low to his right, but a very strong left palm prevented the ball from going in the net, and that, in the end, was the difference in that shootout. It was indeed. So, yeah, as, as Benji's just alluded to, um, Eastley overcame Southampton in the semi-final in a penalty shootout after a one-all draw and in the other semi-final Bournemouth beat Moneyfields 3-2 at Moneyfields. Right we are about to go live and uh, they're just announcing so if it's quite loud at the moment it's just because they're announcing the teams in the ground and of course an empty behind closed door stadium. Yeah it's very strange being in a football ground with with no one here but such are the times we live in. Hopefully the amongst the various benches and media here there'll be a nice little bit of an atmosphere going up an atmosphere deserving of a cup final even if there aren't the fans in the stands to be in full throes of song as perhaps they would normally be definitely so Lewis Beale is standing over the ball here for Eastley ready for the kickoff just making the last few counts that would be our referee and we are off so what are you expecting from tonight's game these are both young sides but they play good football and keeping the ball on the deck is probably a prerogative we've got very blustery conditions here today at so stadium so perhaps those long balls which teams sometimes like to throw into the mixer they're probably going to be a bit less accurate than they would normally so keeping it down and playing what uh, nice attractive passing football is probably the order of the day but if the balls are played slightly longer, it's going to be very difficult to deal with. Uh, very abso difficult. Absolutely. Well, an interesting thing about that is uh, Mark Travers, the uh, Republic of Ireland international, who's in goal for Bournemouth, wearing that luminous orange jersey, actually has a goal to his name. Uh, but on their first game on loan to Weymouth a couple of years ago, uh, scored from inside their own half in similarly blustery conditions. So that is perhaps something to keep an eye on if they get a long-range free kick. And, of course, for those that aren't here, um, Travers does have the wind behind him. It is in the direction of the faces of Eastley at the moment. So it's a nice, <laughs> nice quick start here, and there's a foul there. So it'll be a Bournemouth free kick just inside their own half. And it's a long ball forward, and I believe that's been flicked for a corner. It has got Kilkenny there, key man again as well. Ball over the top, and it's well dealt with there at the back by Easley. Leon in the game, so a little bit of more agricultural defending there. Just get it out and give yourselves a chance to regroup. It does look like they're playing quite an expansive back four at the moment. Um, the fullbacks are getting quite forward. It's quite the, it's the modern way, really, isn't it, Benji? Yeah, we do set, do tend to have those uh, fullbacks do a bit less defending and almost, especially in certain games, act like extra winners. Really overload those. Yeah, definitely. So, from the start, Bournemouth have been in a lot of possession here. Um, do you think that's something that will continue? I think probably. It seems like easily we're ready for that as well. You see, they've got those fullbacks. They are pressing them all the way out to the wings, but they look very solid in the centre so far. They've got some big centre backs in the middle there, and perhaps they're willing to let them have the flanks and trust that they can have that aerial ability to deal with those balls into the box. Yeah, definitely. So it's going to be an early free kick here for Ross Flitney, and as we've already said, saved a penalty in the last round, might be a key man again tonight, and. As you may not know, it is straight to penalties tonight if it is level full-time. Um, 
don't have the dreaded e uh, um, extra time tonight, Benji. No, no extra time, golden goal, silver goal. If it's all level at the end of 90 minutes, plus stoppages, as you mentioned, straight to penalties. Yeah, I just break away here. Tom Barish with the ball in the box there. Flicked over. Early chance and an early goal. Somewhat against the run of play, Eastley lead. What a beautiful ball into the box. It wasn't just lumped in there, it was a deliberate pick out of a player at the back post. The goalkeeper in the centre of the goal couldn't do it with that downward header. That's what they do say that you want to do with those headers. Aim them towards the floor so that you don't get it going over the bar and it can be very difficult to deal with on the bounce. Abdullah Baggy with that goal. It was, a, it was a good header, it was, it was held up uh, in that wind, and, but Bournemouth had held the ball for the first few minutes. Clinically, it has to be said, and the Sierra Leone International finished with a plomb. Definitely, it was, it was worthy, of it, uh, worthy of a goal that cross though, wasn't it? Yeah, as we say, delectable ball, but intentional pick out, and now easily perhaps, I would, wouldn't be surprised to see them drop a little bit wide. Ball on the edge to kill Kenny, just over. Baller. They are indeed, and looking at the previous results in this competition, I think goals were probably always on the agenda. 18 goals Bournemouth have scored in their four games in this competition to this point. And, you know, that's a lot of goals, but they have leaked a few at the back as well. They've got two 3-2 victories in there. So perhaps they, you know, they've, we've shown that they can be hit on the counter and on the break. All I will say is that Eastleigh have got a, a few less uh, first teamers involved tonight because, of course, they are now pushing for a playoff place, uh, their first team in, in the National League. As we just break here, Eastley with the ball forward. There's Dan Smith out wide with the yellow boot, and it will be a throw into Eastley. Yeah, very strong block there by Corey Jordan. Just happy to show the offensive player right down the wing, not give up that inside track. Baggy is just saying just to calm down, calm down. They know they've got the lead, and although it's very early in the match, they do want to just calm this down. You're interested to see how Bournemouth deal with this because, as we mentioned, they a very good victory in their uh, Central League Cup final last week, but they were dominant in that game. They didn't really have to do that much defending at the back. It's a free kick. Foul on Tom Blair there. It was unlucky that because uh, Christian Sadie was driving forward, he took on a few players, and he just got it nicked off him. Yeah, this is the scenario that perhaps you think tends to favour the underdogs getting those getting these set pieces in and they're so important there's a reason that managers place such an emphasis on them because if you can get them lined up properly stick to your tactics they do often lead to goals so this is Dan Bradshaw with the free kick and it's a swing up ball played over the top a little push there maybe not given by the ref but Eastley have regained possession yeah that was good not just because the defenders have it didn't mean that they were Going to slack, they were slacking off there, putting the putting it under pressure, winning the ball back high up the pitch. But now they've gone back into their own half. I think to allow Bournemouth to come out slightly and thus give themselves a bit more space to work with. It's it's been played at a frenetic pace so far. It'll be interesting if they can uh, to see if they can continue that for the whole game. It will be unlikely in conditions like this. Yeah, it's it's a bit end-to-end -end stuff, and we're seeing the wind come into play there with that long ball that spun back viciously. It's it's back to the edge, and actually. Jane and Anthony could benefit here and they've got a corner. That's all come from the wind taking Ross Flitney's, uh, uh, taking his goal kick right the way back to him. And as we mentioned, you've got to be wary of the wind, especially when we have stadiums like this, where you get a bit of cover in the middle of the pitch, but towards the ends, it's very exposed. And with the wind, as you mentioned, going strongly right to left, it's something Chance to be aware here. of. Oh, and it's just over. Cross came in from uh, Zamora then, but they couldn't take advantage. Yeah, the rain beginning to come. Weather system coming from <laughs> from the right hand side. You can see the sun kind of trying to peek through there, but <laughs> at the moment the rain's definitely winning that one. Definitely. So it's Ross Flitney here with the goal kick. He's gone a bit lower that time to try and beat that wind. Baggy looks like he's on side. There's no flag. Yeah, time that run to perfection, Doug. And he's just turned back. I, I think he's trying to be patient, as he was saying earlier. And the ball's not gone out, and now it has. There we go. So it'll be Galella on at the back there. Uh, oh, no, it won't be. <laughs> it'll be Genesini. Genesini with the throw in there. 
Yeah, looking for options from this throne. There's not one particularly available. Has to go short, and it's still deep in Bournemouth territory here. Yeah, but there's an opportunity to come out here with the left back, and he's got he's got gas. He's got area to drive into as well. And Greenwood Led can put a good finish in. He uh, assisted with the cross with his right foot, which he has been improving in, but it's predominantly a left-sided player. It's, uh, they're just trying to be a bit more patient, but then there's the long ball, and it's gone too far. Yeah, that is the direction to be playing those long balls in, but as we mentioned, you can already see they're adjusting for the wind. These are lower and flatter, a bit more direct than perhaps the more traditional hung-up ball for your tall centre-forwards to try and knock down and bring other players into play. And also, it's, it's gusty at the moment, so it's, it's not very consistent. So it'll be like th throw deep in their own territory. Yeah, after Bournemouth looked very dominant in the first few minutes of the game, easily have come back into this well, it has to be said. Definitely, and the goal would have given them a lot of confidence. No doubt. But it's now a Bournemouth throw. Zamora with the ball. Now, Anthony with a bit of space here, but a misplaced pass, and this could give Eastley an opportunity, but they've just been patient with it. Yeah, no pressure. Already that one goal up, and of course, it'd be very difficult to play out the one nil win from this point forward. But choosing to play sensible football at the back, this one's hung up a little bit. This could be dangerous. You would have thought that Bournemouth would have had the advantage with the wind in their favour in the first half, but of course, that cross and that goal has, has changed the whole complexion of the first half. But Kilkenny with the ball here. Simple pass out, and he's just lost the ball there. Yeah, they're very compact in the middle of the pitch, easily. And you can see Bournemouth have tried it a few times to go through there, but they haven't really found that space that they need. Long ball here. That might be offside. Dan Smith, didn't, and it's been flagged. Yeah, I think he tried to get out of the way in the end, did Lewis Beale. Yeah, I think I think there was. I think he interfered with play, and I think that's the right call from the linesman there. Yeah, I'd be I'd be inclined to agree with you on that one. Of course, no no VAR here, so those offside <laughs> flags go up nice and promptly. Yeah, very true. So the boys might have spoken about it in the uh, lead up. The last two meetings between these sides have been heavily in favour of Bournemouth. And we've got a free kick here and our first yellow card of the night. Our first yellow card of the night for the, for the pull there. Yeah, one of those, uh, even though these are quite young sides, it's what you tend to call a veteran challenge, just interfering with the play, breaking it up. Yeah, a bit of a professional foul, isn't it? But you mentioned the previous results, the gone Bournemouth's way. Bournemouth have actually knocked Eastley out of this competition. I say the previous two years, the previous two competitions. Obviously, it wasn't quite the previous two yeah, years, no. because last year is still this year in the weird nether time zone that is 2020-2021. So we've got an opportunity here for Gavin Kilkenny to put the ball into the box. Jordan, uh, Jordan Zamura is also standing over it. They've got Genesini's little outlet ball if they want to play a free pass into the centre as well. Yeah, definitely, and he can strike the ball from distance as well. But I would imagine this is probably going to be Gavin Kilkenny, the Republic of Ireland under-21 international. Quite a few players in the box there. Corey Jordan with a bit of height for Bournemouth in there. And it is Kilkenny. And it's cleared. Genesini on the edge. And it's back out to Kilkenny. As the rain continues to come down here at Snow Stadium. If you're just joining us. Yeah. And that has gone out. And it will be an easy throw. And Tom Blair's just leaving that for Bowen, Callum Bowen. And we just see the sun just starting to break through now. Could be a sign of uh, good things to come, Benji. Yeah, it's, it's quite a sight when you're undercover. Probably not so much if you're exposed. And it's Kilkenny again. Plays the ball forward. Zamora's making a run out left. He gets the ball now. Ball into the box, and Flitney wasn't sure whether that was going into the far post there, so it has gone out for a corner. Yeah, I wonder if O'Connell looked up for someone to play the ball to, didn't see them, and then thought, I don't know, maybe with Flitney off his line, an audacious lob. But it was a, a bit of a cross-come shot, wasn't it? Good keeping, though. Nice strong palm, flapped it behind, and now it's a corner for Bournemouth. Just 
So Bournemouth like to have a couple of men out there for these corners. Yeah, it's going to be the in-swinger with that left foot. Oh, a possible little push there. I don't think there's enough to give a foul there. The referee seems inclined to agree with you. It's going to be a goal kick here. It was a very strong decision, wasn't it, from the ref? He was, he was very clear on that decision. Yeah, and I don't think Jordan was that close to it either. There was, there was a bit of a coming together, but I think it was over both of their heads regardless. Definitely. So, as we've spoken about already, it is an opportunity to League Cup win in the week over Carlisle United at St George's Park. So, that would be quite an achievement, don't you think, Benji? I mean, you wait ages for a cup final and then to come along at once. They're like the proverbial buses, aren't oh, they? Oh, there's a nice little cliche for you guys at the moment. Just getting a little bit messy. I was going to say that. Took the words right out of my mouth, yeah. Doug. Galella with the, the wind. They're playing it lower and flatter. Yeah. It allowed Blair to get that leg in the way. And there was a late challenge there, although it didn't make connect. So it will be a free kick to Bournemouth. Just a little bit of indi ill discipline coming in there. Yeah, they've had a few of these uh, set pieces in these areas in Eastleigh territory. At the start of the game, they were playing these very quickly, trying to catch Eastleigh napping, but it seems to be a bit more deliberate now. Christian Sadie holding that ball up there. Looking to yeah, you have to say it's great positioning from the defender there. Got their body in the way, and it meant that there was no... Right, and nine matches of the 49 now have gone to penalties in this tournament. So, could be a long night, potentially. Well... <laughs> Not as long as if it was extra time and fans, but... No, and I'll be honest, if it goes to penalties, obviously I think th th both teams will be disappointed they didn't win it in normal time, but what a spectacle it would be. Uh, indeed, definitely. Sadie with the ball again. And he gets it back, takes a shot. <laughs> And it is deflected wide, so it will be a corner ball to Bournemouth. We're seeing though Eastleigh defending very deep. They're trying to keep all the play in front of them, prevent those runs in behind. They've taken it short to kill Kenny. And now a chance. Baggy's going forward here. And they've got a few men if they can get the ball away. It's just slowed down slightly, but there's the more direct ball. Now Dan Smith. Really nice touch to bring that yeah, down. Yeah, definitely. And a foul there on Tom Blair. Got some of the ball, but got some of the man as well. And that's a foul that Bournemouth will probably be happy to concede, prevent the quick break. The, uh, the Bournemouth, Bournemouth bench were quite angry at the, uh, created a quite angry reaction to that. And the, the rain is, uh, the heavens have opened. Yeah, it is hammering it down now. It's very atmospheric. I mean, uh, rainbow spotting, I think, is going to be in order as well during half-time. Bradshaw with the... It wasn't a good enough cross, but there's a chance. Nope. Not happening there. Yeah, too low. It's always disappointing when that set piece doesn't seem to beat the first player, but I think that is partly because we've seen balls in the air be very swirly, and so they're trying to keep it lower and flatter. So we Callum Bowen with the throw-in. Turn them not to go here. Dan Smith has got a chance to play it to Baggy. And it is a free kick. Yeah, Anthony, I think, just got his feet caught. There wasn't a huge amount in it, but there was enough. I, think. I, I don't think there was much of an attempt to get the ball there. It's one of those things, but he, he, it's, it's difficult because it's a little bit slippery out on the turf now. So you're losing your footing and you're trying to regain your balance while also winning the ball. It's not the easiest trick. Indeed. So this is a very dangerous position here for Eastleigh. Baggy has put it down with quite a lot of intent, but there are three players around it. The others seem to be walking away. So Abdullah Baggy is the player that we believe will take this free kick. And those of you who watched the, I was going to say last year's Senior Cup final, obviously two years ago, but the previous season, there was a beautiful uh, free kick scored in the final Indeed. on that occasion as well. So this is a chance, probably slightly closer than that attempt was. It's only about probably 21 yards out. This is a real opportunity to test Tra uh, Travers. Sometimes these are more difficult because it's difficult to get it up and Daggy. down. Oh, just wide. That bow. They're closed down very quickly. Ball forward in slippery conditions here, and it's going to be an easily ball in a good position. He's done a very good job of winning the ball or at least putting pressure on it high up the pitch. It's not a full press necessarily, 
I think that's probably been with, uh, with in mind because of the, the players with speed and power on the Bournemouth side. Now a chance to drive here for Zamora. Plays to Sadie. Yeah, Ben Greenwood with the ball in hand here. Anthony with a little tap back. Possibly hit a hand there, but it's not been given. Dan Smith holding the ball up there. Strong challenge that came in there. Yeah, too much intent, I thought. Long ball forward here. Something for the Bournemouth lot to deal with. And it's a quick free kick taken by Genesini. This is what we saw in the first few minutes of the game. Bournemouth getting it going quickly, not hanging around. But Eastley. Bowen with the long ball forward. Strong header from the captain, Gilella, for uh, Bournemouth. Excellent tackle to win the ball back there, though, by Dan Bradshaw for Eastley. Ball high in the air. That's well won by Bournemouth there. And an opportunity here just to slowly make their way forward. I think I'd like to see them stretch it down the wing a bit more. Oh, careless pass, but they got away with it. Yeah. They've been quite easily defending very compactly in the centre of the pitch. But there is a bit more space on the wings if Bournemouth can find a way to utilise it. And as we said, Bournemouth were probably the big favourites for the match before the game. But so far... They've shown a little bit, but they haven't been able to make the breakthrough yet. Yeah, they were dominant early on, and then easily got that goal, and they've come into the game very strongly from that point forward. Dangerous ball, well won. Uh, Greenwood with the touch. It's on for Zamora. He's been driven out wide, and that's a foul. Again, needless foul. Yeah, going towards the sideline, clearly trying to either win the corner or win the foul there. In the end, it's a bit of a clumsy shove from Tom Blair. And again, Gavin Kilkenny is heading over for this one. Zamora's there as well. Kilkenny, who has made a few uh, first team appearances, including in the EFL Cup third round defeat to Man City in September, came on as a sub for that one. It's a deep delivery, but it's too far for everyone. Just over hit in the end. It's always a shame when you see these good, these set pieces in good positions go to waste. And especially being a goal down, yeah, it's very early still, but you would think that these opportunities, they need to start taking them. Yeah, that delivery doesn't necessarily need to be pinpoint, but if you can get it in the mixer, get a knockdown, play for a second ball, especially when you've got big physical presences like Sidey up there. I mean, he's a, he's a very good footballer as well. He's got a really, really cultured touch but he's but also he's got quite a big frame he's, yeah, quite a he's got a physical, physical presence, presence. Yeah. yeah undoubtedly can i can i chuck a cliche in oh go on then he's got good feet for a big man oh there it is there it is he threatened that one earlier ladies and gentlemen well. Seeing that one or two people are asking about the score online, and it is 1 0 after an early Abdullah Baggy goal. It's 1 0 to Eastley against the run of play after a strong start from Bournemouth. Beautiful header down into the bottom corner. Gavin Kilcanny. Jaden Anthony is having to come very deep to collect that ball. Maybe a sign of frustration? Perhaps, maybe they're trying to get their more creative players involved earlier in the play. Definitely. It's a nice play out there, but they're not really doing anything with it at the moment. I think they're trying to commit easily defenders a little bit further out to expose that space that they leave. And then have uh, Sadie to, with the, burn, uh, paint, the, the pace to burn. Yeah, with the pace and the physicality, yeah. Picks the ball up. So Galella at the back here. Playing next to Corey Jordan. And now it's Nippard. Corey Jordan looks for the long ball to Christian Sadie. It's over the top of his head, and it's just a little bit too far. Sadie did call for that, though. Yeah, the ball was just a little bit over here, although this is not necessarily a bad position to lose the ball because it's a throw-in right by the corner flag. For it. But they've got away with it. Get on, get on, get on, get on, get on. 
Jaden Anthony fouled there. Quite a long way out, but still an opportunity here. Yeah, a couple of easily fans who have perched themselves on top of a van there trying to get a view of the game. Love it. Absolutely yeah. love it. Yeah, you might be hearing the little bit of cheering. I mean, I... You guys at home. And it and is Corey Jordan here at the back. Yeah, now with the rain stuff as well. It's a beautiful evening here. At the beautiful out of it. There are about eight players from Eastleigh around the ball there. It's just a very solid core of this Eastleigh defence at the moment, and Bournemouth seem to be struggling to find a way through it. Kilkenny picking up the ball deep here. He seems to be... He's made a run beyond. O'Connell plays the ball back out to him. Promising position here. But then a sloppy pass again. Yeah, they're trying to keep the play moving very quickly, and it's meant that they've had a couple of sloppy first-time passes. When it works, it really does stretch the defence, but it, it's a little bit more risky than taking your time. Indeed. That's a good save after the deflected cross. You, especially in slightly slippery conditions, you do sometimes see those squirm away. Slippery conditions and the sun in his eyes in this first half. After an Abdullai Baggy goal, uh, goal very early on, after Bournemouth had dominated play for the first few minutes, very much against the run of play. And Bournemouth very much having most of the ball at the moment as well. The question is, can Eastley weather this storm? It needs to do. And Kilkenny fouled there. And this is what Bournemouth were doing at the start of the game when they were playing well. Is they weren't hanging around. They were, they had that pace. And yeah, the defender, give them a little bit of credit. They got enough, got enough pressure to prevent them from directing that header goalwards. But promising attack now. We're seeing Bournemouth get the ball into the box a little bit more. And just a few of the Eastley, uh, Eastley subs just heading out for a little bit of a stretch and a little bit of a warm up just in front of us. Litney with a goal kick there. Big flicked header. Baggy could get onto this, and he has. He's got Tony uh, Ainan just in support there. It's back to Flitney. Long ball. That That's is a long ball. That's a much better long ball than they had in the than they had uh, earlier in the game when it spiralled all the way back, almost into Flitney's grasp. Definitely. The wind has died down somewhat now, so... Um, we did get a little bit wet, didn't we? <laughs> yeah, some of the camera crew... How mean. I mean, everyone likes a bit of Schadenfreude, don't they? And another misplaced pass from Bournemouth. I, I, they're going to start getting frustrated with this. Yeah, they've got to remember... They've got to trust what their system is. They've got to, they've got a style of play. It generally is keeping the... Genesini here. And he's driving forward. He's cut inside. Kick. After the foul on Kilkenny, that all came from that beautiful turn. What a defender! The Moore's left foot. You would imagine Kilkenny looks like he's he's getting to think it round the wall to draw Bournemouth level. Beautiful, absolutely beautiful. Uh, what? Yeah, level pegging now. Yeah, at the corner. Sadie with a flicked header. But nobody behind him to collect it. Zamora did really well to win that. Great dummy. Sadie with the ball out to Genesee. Good ball in there. Uh, Eastley driving to travel. Hold. Quite composed at the back. Just a little at the back. Sometimes you can get away with it, but it was perhaps a little too obvious. Yeah, and the replay show. For an Good save, though, from Mark Travers, the yeah. Republic of Ireland international. Fantastic save, that. Much like Flintney's penalty save in the shootout, somehow had that telepathic connection that knew exactly where the ball was going to end up. Definitely, yeah. Can't be giving the ball away there. Oh, but O'Connell's kept hold of it. And Anthony's got the ball here. Looks for Sadie. Misplaced pass. So that penalty save is a bit of a get-out-of-jail-free card for the captain of Gilella. He's just gone down on his haunches there. Hope he's all right. Yeah, it looks like he's fine. Probably frustration at missing the target. Yeah. Credit the defender there, put under pressure. Flitney came out nice and early as well, closed down the angles, and it meant that Zamora really had to aim for the corners. And you can see that's what they tell you to do, get it across the goal rather than trying to beat the keeper at his near post because generally goalkeepers, they do tend to protect that closer side. But this time Zamora just couldn't quite dot it in the bottom of the corner and dragged it wide. Yeah, and we're just, I'm just having a little look at uh, the 
game, uh, the lineup for Bournemouth from the game in midweek, their cup final victory. There are only two changes for tonight's game, and that's Mark Travers coming in for Will Dennis and goal, and Ryan Glover dropping out, and Corey Jordan coming in. So slightly different shape, slightly different shape. And talking of Corey Jordan, there's him with the header. Baggy with the ball, just can't keep hold of it. That's a much tidier piece of defending, that one from Gellella. Definitely. So, Connell coming forward. He's got Genesini outside him, and he plays it out wide to him. He's got a bit of space to cross. Nobody in there. What a, that's a devilish cross. It's a lung-busting run from Greenwood all the way down this side of the pitch. Maybe if he gambled, he could have tried to get that back in the box, perhaps. Yeah, he had made a, a, a good run in, but it wasn't to be. And as we said, it is a lovely evening now. It's a stunning evening. Now. It's glorious, yeah. Just had to just had to keep the faith done. No sign of the floodlights at the moment. There are plenty of long shadows over the pitch. What else would you rather be doing on a on a spring evening? Oh, absolutely nothing than sitting here with you commentating on this match. I mean, we do appreciate how privileged we are to be here. But and, and yeah, just to remind people about that, the, the whole team here, everyone has had to pass two COVID tests. They have had to give two negative COVID tests before they would be allowed to come into the ground. All the players were tested as they arrived, just to make sure we are nice and COVID secure and nobody is placed at risk. So Bournemouth back with the ball here. It's Luke Nippard. We haven't seen a great deal of him yet. So you do have to say that if Eastley had managed to convert that penalty there, Bournemouth have had a lot more of the ball. Yeah. But it's not. But in the end, the only stat that matters is the number of goals. I appreciate that there's a bit more nuance to it than that. <laughs> Anthony with the opportunity. Oh, solid challenge. Tom Bragg with a, a, a thoroughly strong punt clear. And why not when you're getting under pressure there with Bournemouth winning the ball high up? It's interesting to see that Nippard and Genesini on the right are interchanging somewhat in order to give them both an opportunity to attack. And it is an easily free kick down in the... Chopping and changing as well, taking it in turns to push forward and drop back. I think it's because of Samura's uh, ability to attack. His attacking pace is, is something to, to behold. And as we've seen, has real quality with the ball. Real quality. So it will be Flitney who's going out to take this free kick down in the corner. If you are just joining us, it is Bournemouth 1, Eastley 1 here in the Senior Cup Final, the Men's Senior Cup Final here from AFC Totten, the snow, and it is a Bournemouth free kick. How often do we see teams just switch off ever so slightly as we approach the end of the half and that leaves them vulnerable and it's such a devastating time to concede as well because it changes your team talk so rapidly. So there's the board, just come up with one minute added on. And Greenwood out wide here on the left. Cuts inside. Kilkenny. Sadie. Kilkenny again. And hits his own man, O'Connell. But it's going to get out to Genesini with a hung ball up. Zamora's approaching it. Oh, couldn't get it. Now, Eastley potentially with the opportunity to drive forward. One last chance potentially in this half. Probably knew what he was doing. Yeah. A little bit of tussling with the arms interlocked. Yeah, and it doesn't look like we've got long left. Ref's just had a little look at his his watch. Bournemouth finishing this half very strongly. Dangerous ball in there. Nearly a couple of players got on the end of it, and they couldn't quite turn it back into an opportunity. So potentially last player this half. We've got Callum Bowen here, just inside the Bournemouth half. Uh, just inside the uh, Bournemouth half. Yeah, they pinched a couple of yards with that free yeah. kick. Long ball forward here, and it is half time here in the men's senior cup final here at snow stadium in totten eastley one bournemouth one goals from abdullah baggy and gavin kilkenny so benji what do you think after that first half what an entertaining game both sides had strong spells 
so at some points as well, they, they had to struggle a little bit as well, work for it. Bournemouth have had more of the ball, but maybe easily had the most clear-cut chances. Wonderful header from that cross in, and the penalty as well. Yeah, of course, if you have just joined us, Mark Travers has saved a penalty from Dan Smith, and we will hand back to our presenters on the night, Fabian Vera and Harrison Reed. Can you get the team sheet out and hold it up? Taking the first goal and Bournemouth equalising their 1 1 towards the end of that first half. Harrison, <laughs> what a game that her first half easily took the advantage that perhaps we weren't expecting at all. Yeah, so I think Bournemouth obviously still celebrating their cup win last weekend at the start of the match. Um, and it just, there was just uh, a ball in from the right hand side, clipped into the back post. Brilliant header, header by Abdullah Baggy. And it, it was just a, a chance he couldn't miss, really. Uh, and then we didn't really see much bit of a, a rainstorm over the first half an hour. And then um, Bournemouth missed a couple of gilt-edged chances, gave away a, a penalty as well. Um, and it could easily have been Spitfires winning at half-time. But um, Bournemouth equalised uh, through... I mean, uh, it was... It was. It was a lovely goal for that equaliser. Bournemouth were left on the back foot. They were putting easily on the defensive towards the end of that first half. Well, what is going to be the talk in the dressing room for, between those managers in order to get, the, to get to that end? Look, from what we've seen in the first half, Bournemouth, it's Bournemouth's game to lose, really. They've had three beautiful chances where they should have scored, given away a penalty. It's a brilliant save by the goalkeeper as well from the penalty because he's tucked that right in the bottom left corner. So I think 1-1 one, one at half-time with the penalty involved as well. Look, Eastley are going to be really happy with this result and they're going to try and keep all the men behind the ball, which is what they've done the first half. They've let Bournemouth play their football. They let Bournemouth come at them. Uh, but I feel like if they carry on doing that in the second half, they're going to concede goals. So we'll see. Uh, we'll, definitely, we'll definitely be seeing what is the has an offer. So far, they have been defending that, that goal and they've managed, managed to pull through the standing first half in order to take the lead. Now, we're going to have a quick look at what the Eastley manager had to say as we managed to get to speak to him earlier on. But I'm afraid that's still not on the card. So I'm afraid we are having some technical difficulties today. We do apologize for any of the laggy of the lagginess that you may be seeing at home in your televisions or in your laptops or on your mobile phones. We are doing our absolute best to get things on track. With that being said, I've got our reporter Leon Gudo has been behind the scenes taking a look at what's been going on. So Leon, Leanne, give us a quick update as to what you as to what you have encountered the yeah. first half. Fabian, so it has been a bit of a mixed bag and uh, we do need to apologise to everybody at home. We know there's been some lag on the feed tonight and we are so sorry about that. We are a group of students from Selwyn University. We've got a very professional setup here, but sometimes you just can't help it with the Wi-Fi, etc. You know how it is, technical problems. However, we're doing our best. Um, there's lots of stuff on the feed for you and there's lots more on our social media channels as well. So do take a look because we've been posting pictures and videos behind the scene footage. So find us on Twitter at Solent Sports News or Facebook and Instagram at Solent Sports News. Do note that there is an S on the Facebook and Instagram accounts. That's just the way it is. Um, send us your pictures. Tell us where you're watching tonight and um, let us know the successes of the bits that you've been able to see well. Again, we're really sorry, but lots more to come tonight, so don't give up yet. Now, of course, it hasn't all just been negative on tonight's game with those issues. There has been some few positive comments. What are they, what are they saying? Absolutely. Uh, in general, they are absolutely loving our excellent commentary tonight. So commentary from Doug Taxel Weber and Benji Reese. Loads of stuff on there. Really, really fun to listen to. So do get on there and have a listen for yourself because I think you'll find that makes it. No, definitely. I've been standing, in, I've been standing there in those seats watching the game and just having the Doug and Benji right behind my head. It definitely makes the game a lot more livelier to be watching. Um, of course, we're gonna have keep keep in touch. If you have any messages, if you've got anything to, you want to add, any comments, do text and do send your social media updates to Leanne, who will be expecting any of those. Um, Harrison, what are we expecting back from that second half? What can we expect? 
to be different. I think in the second half, we're going to see a lot more football, to be honest. Um, it was a bit difficult for the players in the first half with the rain literally bellowing down immediately after the first whistle. Especially so, at that moment with the wind, what literally brought the ball back to the goalkeeper as soon as he tried to send it half on the end. Exactly, yeah, the wind here has been chaotic at times. And um, I think Eastley did well to put up with it in the first half with their, uh, their backs to goal. But uh, in the second half, I think we, we might see a different kind of Eastley team. They've got the wind for them. And uh, I think they'll take a lot of praise from the manager to only be drawing at half-time. Um, even though they've missed a penalty, I don't think they deserve to be winning. Well, if they, we're going to see what we have in show for the second half of the game. Then we are expecting it. If it does stay at 1-1, we do go to penalties. Who do you think will have the edge if we do go to penalties? I think if we're going to penalties, uh, obviously we've got uh, a young goalkeeper in the Bournemouth net, Mark Travers, who he has played three games for the Republic of Ireland. Let's not forget that. And he has already saved a penalty tonight. He'll take great confidence in that. But in the East League goal, uh, 36 years of age, hundreds of professional, uh, profession, professional appearances, semi-professional appearances. Look, he saved a penalty in the shootout, in the semi-finals. Anything could happen. OK, perfect. So just before, just before the start of the second half, we actually have the CEO of the Hampshire FA, Mr. Neil Kusar. Mr. Neil, welcome. Welcome. If you just take the microphone from there from Mr. Harrison, we will be able to hear you. OK. So your thoughts on that first half? Well, yeah, it was uh, a lot of possession for Bournemouth, um, but Eastley almost had the chance to come in leading the game. So, yeah. So how, how proud are you that you're able to uh, set up this organisation, this cup for the players? How important is this competition for everyone that's involved? Well, it's the premier non-league cup competition in the area. So it's really important. And it's obviously for the pro clubs like Bournemouth and Southampton and Portsmouth have entered. They've been able to enter their under-23s, their under-21s. So it gives them really good opportunity to play against good quality opposition. Now, of course, COVID-19 has taken a huge impact on all sorts of sports, including grassroots sports. How important is it that your organisation is able to open up the doors and able to invite people to come in and play a bit more, do a bit more physical activity? Well, this final alone, you know, it's a year, over a year ago, it should have been played. So to, to get back in and have both teams support the game and AFC Totten hosting it and you guys putting the show on, it's been, it's been really good. In terms of grassroots football, uh, there's still some way to go because we've still got limits on spectators, but it's great to have the, the kids back playing football. They've missed so much and, uh, yeah, it's really good to be able to provide that for them. And any future plans, any future, any future activities that you may be coming up with in order to continue with that philosophy? We've got a new academy starting in September for school leavers this year. So that's a really exciting opportunity where we can uh, provide football industry experience for them. So we've got hopefully two teams joining us in September, which is we're really excited about. No, that's perfect, perfect, perfect to hear. So your thoughts expecting that? Who would you expect to win? Any, any support for out there for any of the teams for that second half? I think Eastleigh have defended really well because, as I say, Bournemouth had a lot of the ball. Um, so I'm expecting Bournemouth to come on a bit stronger. Um, and if, if you're asking me, I'm, I'll probably think Bournemouth will sneak it. Oh, well, only one way to find out. You must stay tuned and would we'll see those scores and see who wins that cup and leaves that cup. Neil, thank you very much you. for your time. It's been an absolute Cheers. pleasure talking to you and no I hope problem. you enjoy the second half. Thank you. Thank you. Now, of course, only a couple more minutes before the second half kicks off. Harrison, lovely. We're just talking to Neil there. How important is it that we actually able to get, you know, the, the people into the sports and into, into gra grassroots football because they've been the ones that have been most affected. Look, yeah, it's, it's obviously very important that you've touched upon that because for most of the people here, for most of the people involved in this cup, for the Hampshire FA, for grassroots, this is the beginning of the end of what we know of COVID, I think. We've had such a long time of being inside, staying by ourselves and just the difficulty of actually just managing the situation. Um, the atmosphere here, it may be a small atmosphere, but we're all glad to be around live football. And we're all glad to be back out and back into society. And uh, football is, it's not just structured to sport, is it? Yeah. It's, it's so much more than that. And the fact that we get to put on this spectacle tonight and uh, finish the 2020 Hampshire Cup final, finally, uh, after long wait, it, it's, it's key. So I think 
it's a very exciting time at the moment to be around football. No, it's, it's probably worth mentioning that, of course, this game is being played behind closed doors, but perhaps if you have seen or even heard, there are some fans that have managed to climb onto the back of a van uh, through a ladder to watch the game. Uh, so, you know, we're all eager to try and get some, some, some sort of views into this football. This is probably the, the first uh, bit of action that they might have been seeing. Look, yeah, we all want to watch football. Um, I'm not too sure if the health and safety advisor is going to be too hot on that, uh, especially with the rain. It might get quite slippery. So we might, uh, you never know, have a little bit more content for you being framed after today's match. We'll see. Um, but look, I think the, the weather's calmed down now. We've got nice blue skies. There's not much wind at the moment, actually, touch wood. Uh, we could be in for a real game this second half. And a lot of it, a, a very much a different game to what we saw the first half. The conditions have changed completely. Yes, yes. Now, we had, we had a lot of torrential rain. For a moment, you <laughs> you grabbed your umbrella, you were ready for me. I had I have no umbrella for this game. So if it pours down with rain, I'm afraid that's going to be at the end of me and this programme. Uh, but you're definitely ready for it. Uh, it does seem like the weather will pick up for the second half. Uh, players are still warming up. We're still waiting for those players to come out for this second half of the game. Uh, is, is, there any, is there anything else? Where, where, where could both teams go after this? If How important is it for both teams to win this cup? How important is it for Isley? How important is it for, for Bournemouth? Because they're both in two completely different seasons throughout the year. Look, it's, it's very important for the, for the players. Um, the Eastley players, They've got an opportunity to impress the manager who's here tonight uh, watching on. They've got an opportunity to, to play well this afternoon and possibly get themselves into the plans for next season, for the pre-season. Um, whether that be as a National League club or as a League Two team, we don't know yet. We'll have to see what happens in the playoffs. As well as Bournemouth. Bournemouth have cemented themselves in the Championship playoffs. So some of these players it might be their last opportunity to, to impress and get into the first team for the next season so if I you if you were if you were their manager if you were to pick up any player from either of those two teams to go to the first team who would it be look i've been really impressed with uh, number nine i believe it's dan brown um this first half uh he's taken the ball in well he's held it up he's got other people into play um He's had a couple of chances. He was unlucky with the penalty miss. It was an all right penalty. The goalkeeper's done well. Uh, and then with the Bournemouth team, look, there's, there's some players all over that Bournemouth team. They've had so much of the ball this first half. And uh, I fully expect them to take the ball again in the second half. And it's just whether Eastleigh can hold their shape and uh, stay composed in, in defence and hopefully not concede any more chances because it really it should be... 3 or 4 1 to Bournemouth at the moment. No, definitely credit to Easley for holding the ball. They are not going down as the underdogs in this game. Now we are set to go toward the second half, so we jump over to Benjamin Rees and Douglas Weber who will take us on from this point on. So, Doug, if you're there, start talking. There you go. Welcome back to what has been a glorious Hampshire evening here at the incredibly picturesque Snow Stadium. The Hampshire Men's Senior Cup Final is just about to recommence. Benjamin Reese alongside Doug Webber for the second half of what's been a thoroughly engrossing contest. So what have we had? We've had an early goal, we've had a free kick and a penalty save. Well, I, mean, for, I mean, good goals all round. Bournemouth dominated the early stages before... EC, perhaps against the run of play, scored an excellent low header from Baggy. And then what a free kick. Kilkenny did so well spinning the defender to win the free kick originally. And then a delectable finish that Flitney had no chance for. And it seems that from then on, Bournemouth would only go from strength to strength. But Eastley had other ideas. Yeah, indeed. And it's, it's well poised now, isn't it? There's, they've both had opportunities to score goals. They've, they, they both have scored good attempts. And uh, now it's to see what who has got that opportunity to get that chance to take them to the victory. Yeah, certainly I wouldn't like to uh, predict a winner. It could certainly go either way. Bournemouth with the ball in their own half now. They started the first half like, like they had their hair on fire almost. Indeed. It's uh, slowed down a little bit now. Yeah, we'll see if they start with that same 
verve and panache in the second half. The ball on this near side. It's Genesini drives into the middle of the pitch, it's looking for Sadie. But it was well won by Eastley, and they're going to win a free kick as well. Berish going down under contact from a Bournemouth defender. It'll be interesting to see whether they pump this a long way forward or whether it's just going to be a... Yeah, it looks like it's going to be quite direct, doesn't it? Yeah, it's, it's a clear plan with this free kick. They've got a lot of players down on the far side. Uh, Eastley in the, with the uh, blue shirt, blue socks, blue shorts. Obviously the white shoulders as well up against the, fami the familiar red and white, uh, red and black stripes even of Bournemouth. I thought that was not a mistake that I would make, <laughs> mixing up black and white. Oh, hello, knockdown. Eastley shoot and Eastley score! It's exactly the same as in the first half. Bournemouth started brightly, but they left themselves a little bit exposed at the back and what a finish it was, Doug. Ben Scorey with a cracking finish on the turn there. At half, a half chance, but a very early goal again. We talked about the value of the set pieces in the first half, didn't we, Doug? Bournemouth made theirs, made theirs count, easily couldn't with that fantastic penalty save from Travers. But you see it again on the replay here, across, across Travers, nothing he could do about that one, and what an appropriate name for the goal scorer as well. <laughs> not, not a not a chance for the, for the keeper there but uh, again Bournemouth are going to have to chase a game which they're probably not really used to that much and we have seen they've scored they've scored plenty of goals in the competition 18 in the run up to this game and they scored in the first half as well cross in towards the back stick and it's booted clear by Bowne yeah he had to just get rid of that he didn't know who he had around him but still in a positive position here for Bournemouth Sun just peeking behind the clouds in the distance Try to keep the ball in play. Tight into the corner. Can Bournemouth play their way out? And the floodlights at half-time have just come, come on as the sun goes behind that, uh, those trees, as you said. So we will be in, <laughs> in good condition likewise here. <laughs> yeah, glorious evening. Very fortunate, of course, to be here. Everyone had to follow all the COVID protocols. A couple of negative tests in the run-up, which they're not particularly fun to do, but it's a small price to pay to be able to experience what has been a thrilling game so far. Yeah, indeed, and it's it's it's, an, it's lovely to be up here watching a football uh, a football match in the flesh. Um, it's been so long since we've been out on the terraces, and people continue to wait, but it feels like it's getting closer. Yeah, best seats in the house as Bournemouth or the flag goes up there went up very quickly against Keelan O'Connell. Looks a little bit despondently at the assistant, but then a nod of the head thinks, OK, maybe I just a little bit trigger happy on that run. I think I think the assistant was very confident with that decision. There was there was no doubt on his mind that that player had straight offside. I mean, perfectly positioned to call it as well. Just seeing that a, a few of the Bournemouth subs are uh, warming up. I think they might be needed tonight. Yeah, both teams uh, quite small benches, only uh, five players on each for each side. As for the competition rules, as none of the uh, nine players inside that you see, perhaps in the Premier League or the seven that you would see in the Championship. Or the 12 that you'd see in friendlies. <laughs> well, exactly. So you've got to really work out when to make most of those resources. And Bournemouth had pretty much all of the ball in this game, in this half, certainly, with the exception being that one free kick that Eastley won, put the ball up there, and it was finished with a plum by Ben Scorey. Oh, Gilella does well there, Gilella. You have to say, good pressure as well from Eastley, gave them no option but to retreat eventually all the way back to the goalkeeper. He plays it out now to, Gorilla, to uh, Gilella, occupying that familiar position at right back. Back into the centre now. Bournemouth very comfortable with the ball at the feet. Don't mind playing their way out from the back. Now shifted all the way over to the far side. Trying to drive forward with Zamora. Ball might stay in play here. It is indeed kept alive. And it will be... I'm just trying to see. I think it's going to end up being a goal kick in the end. Did very well to keep that alive for so long. A little bit of discussion there between some Bournemouth players and the referee. I don't think they saw it the same way that they did. No, no. I'm, it was a very tight decision. The ball was kind of bouncing around around the legs. And it's so difficult as well when, every, when everyone's in front of the ball to just try and discern who got that final touch. Flitney places the ball down on the corner of his six-yard box. 
everyone clustering around the halfway line towards that right hand side this one high into the sky it's a Bournemouth head on it things around a bit trying to push ball forward for Sadie to run onto not on that occasion Bournemouth again winning all these balls in the air so far to be able to keep him quiet so far anyway this is a good position for Sadie he's got a bit of space to run onto puts it through slight miscontrol there from O'Connell can't keep the ball in possession easily try and play it forward nice in sliding interception there by it's Sadie saying, Sadie getting back to make that challenge like he he's having to drop deeper isn't he yeah, the work rate cannot be faulted. They haven't necessarily had that many clear-cut chances, despite having a lot of the ball, Bournemouth. Kilkenny drives forward, plays the ball out into space for Zamora. He's got Greenwood on the overlap, spins the defender around. Oh, oh lovely bit of skill to take it past. And again, the ball seems super glued to his feet. And then some no-nonsense defending, a big strong block, and the ball goes out for throw-in at the halfway line. There was a there was a nice dummy there by Anthony, but he it didn't it didn't quite come off as he had thought. O'Connell did pick it up, but as you said, a really good block. And Bournemouth going back, giving themselves to some, giving themselves some space to play with. Gellar drives forward. Oh, a little bit of a no-look pass. Perhaps maybe should have Charles. kept the eyes there. Here's Maggie, the goals, the game's opening goal scorer. Plays it back to Tony Ayan. This one is dinked forward, high up in the air. Good Easily win. win it, but I think it's going to be defended by Greenwood. Has a bit of work to do, and Greenwood concedes the throw in. Again, very tight decision that. And we've seen how dangerous Eastley can be from set pieces. Don't necessarily have that long throw specialist, but good position to have the ball. I thought you were going to start talking about Roy Delap, then the uh, the old school commentators. Uh, finally, <laughs> I mean that is that is the example that people always bring up when they think about the long throw, don't they? But it's a little bit difficult here. The 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 walls are quite close in to the touchline, so you don't necessarily have space to get that long run up. And that one is hoofed out in the end. It does go behind, and that'll be a goal kick for Mark Travers. On the uh, on our YouTube, which you can, as you can, you know that you can comment if you wish. We can see the comments up here in the commentary box. Um, Spicy Paella is saying that Zamora deserves way more first team action. I mean, there are a number of players in this Bournemouth squad that I would fully expect to make the leap into those senior sides in the coming seasons. Yeah, without a doubt. We've already seen a few of these players make their first team appearances. Jaden Anthony, for example, hasn't necessarily had the best game so far today, but did get an outing in the championship at the weekend in a slightly disappointing loss to Wickham. Yeah, a surprise defeat to Wickham, that. The Wickham team that fighting for their lives taking it to the final day of the championship. But, oh, a little bit careless, perhaps, trying to play it back to Travers. In the end, Smith was able to nip in there, but could only divert it behind, and it is a goal kick. And again, a contrast of styles from these goal kicks. Bournemouth keeping it short, playing it on the floor, whereas EC just happy to get it towards the halfway line, play for those knockdowns and second balls. That could have been very dangerous there, but they got away with it. I know there seems to there is a lot of debate about whether it's good to play out from the back. Obviously, when it goes wrong, it, the the uh, consequences seem to be more severe. But there are so many benefits to your side in an attacking sense. You can commit uh, opposition players forward, and it takes them out of the play. It gets your defenders a little bit more confident on the ball, especially if they've got space and time. They can pick those long passes. Again, just looking onto the YouTube, somebody who's uh, claiming to be Arsene Wenger, I don't think it's the Arsene Wenger, unlikely, um, just saying that, uh, come on Bournemouth, seriously, some of your players, uh, some of these players play in the championship. And although that's true, they haven't had the best of it tonight. No, it feels like they've had more of the ball, but they've been slightly blunted in attack by a res relatively resolute easily defence, that one is. Booted all the way back to Travers, who simply rolls this one out to Corey Jordan. See him motioning, trying to direct traffic downfield. Time and space to pick that pass. What a pass it is as well. Header and oh, Anthony couldn't recycle the ball back forward. 
Now Eastley with a run, trying to get the ball in. They found a little bit of space here for Beal. Oh, the final ball was just lacking there, Doug. Yeah, it's, it's disappointing again from uh, from both teams in the attacking half. They've just not had that cut through edge. I know by definition the final pass is always going to be the most difficult because if you get it wrong, it is, it is by the very nature of it, the final pass. But both sides haven't necessarily had that creative outlet ball when necessary, with the exception being that cross for the opening goal in the first few minutes of this game. Bournemouth in a very strong position now, though. Have it on the end of the box with Zamora, who's been one of the brightest spots for Bournemouth now. Still keeps the ball. Oh, lovely, oh, lovely turn. turn. Tries to get back down to the byline in the end. Strong challenge. Oh, there might be a little bit of a nick there. Referee's just going to bring a temporary halt to proceedings so a player can get perhaps a little bit of treatment. Don't know if he's got cramp, perhaps. It looks like he's being stretched off. <laughs> of course, both, uh, both of these sides, the youth sides, haven't necessarily had the same amount of football as they would in a regular season. So, uh, you no. are, might uh, it's it's Bournemouth have probably had a little bit more football more recently because they've been playing a lot of friendlies. Um, but Eastleigh's se uh, their season was curtailed early because of COVID, so they haven't had as many games in the uh, last month or two. Perhaps as this game continues, with the pace that Bournemouth have played at, could see some Eastleigh legs begin to tire. That one is put deep, and it is comfortably collected by Ross Flitney. Tries to get things going quickly. Baggies, ball forward is cut out, and that will end up as an Eastleigh throw. Yeah, Dan Bradshaw was making an attacking run there, but just he couldn't get it under control, Baggy. Yeah, and Genesini in the end was able to block that one, divert it past the touchline. Wins the ball here and puts it in central to kill Kenny. Wants to find Zamora again. The ball a little bit too strong. Just the location just was slipped. right, but the pace was not was a little bit too hard. Yeah, and he just slipped, didn't he? It just one of his legs just went out from underneath him. It's a lovely evening now, but we did have quite a downpour earlier, so it's a little bit slick on the turf here. Lush green field here at Snow Stadium. What a setup! What a what a. I mean, I know I'm going into superlatives here, but it's a beautiful evening in a beautiful stadium. Yeah, and the pitch looks in great condition. I, I know there hasn't been a great deal of football on it, but it did look in lovely condition earlier, and it's still looking great now. It's a cup final quality pitch, certainly. Oh, indeed. Full credit to the ground staff here at AFC Tottenham. So Galello, the Bournemouth captain, gave away a penalty in the first half, but Mark Travers was able to uh, prevent it from going in the net. It was a good save, a very good save very strong save if Bournemouth were, equal, were to equalize here and it was level at the end of 90 minutes we would go straight to penalties that is the scenario currently though easily 2-1 up and defending like their lives depending on it and all oh, just about oh, keeps the ball to Sadie very strong in the challenge tries to put the ball in oh a little bit of a slightly awkward look back and it's going to end up in the car park it was not far from your car actually <laughs> uh, I <laughs> know, uh, it's safe enough, it's safe. It's safe enough, I mean. Necessary intervention though. There's going to be a substitution here for Bournemouth. Ryan Glover's the player who's going to come on. And it's going to be Christian Sadie who's coming off. Interesting that. We picked him out as one of our key men for tonight, but he just hasn't been able to get to, into the game as he could have done. As you said, he's had 11 goals this season, but just not able to get into it tonight. Hasn't quite had the space, perhaps, that they've had in some previous games. He looks a little bit disappointed as, for himself and for his team as well, that he perhaps wasn't able to contribute in the yeah. way they would have liked. But that, with strikers, that's the way it goes sometimes. And getting a fresh set of legs on here with enough time to influence the second half as well. Ball's going to be whipped in with a left foot by Greenwood, an in-swinger. High header, oh, it may be opportunity on the volley, and it's blazed over the bar. And that one very <laughs> nearly did hit my car, to be fair. Uh, in the end, it cleared, it cleared all, of the, uh, all of the vehicles in the car park, and it's gone comfortably out for a goal kick. But that was a threatening ball in, though. That's the best corner I think we've seen from either side so far. He really can whip them in, Greenwood. He's, he's done it all, all season. I say season. <laughs> all friendlies um, throughout the friendlies he's, he's been whiffing in the ball brilliantly um, but yeah I've got to be honest I was surprised that they brought off Sadie I would have thought that they probably would have brought off uh, Anthony instead but Anthony's playing a little bit deeper so I can understand getting fresh legs on up top to try and test those easily defenders and here we are here's a great opportunity on the break keeping the ball oh Anthony spins and shoots and beats 
given away at the near post by Ross Flitney. Anthony let the ball run across his body. Flitney closed down the angles and he tried to drive it in at that near post, but Flitney was equal to it. Flitney's response was quite funny. There was a little bit of a, just a nonchalant look of, don't take me on at my near post, you're not going to beat me there. <laughs> I think also maybe questioning Luke's shot at the defence there because drove forward a long way with the ball did O'Connell and especially after we've seen what a threat Greenwood can be with the set piece delivery. So the whistle goes. They've got a short option here as well in Jaden Anthony if they want it, but Greenwood does put the ball in. Flitney goes for it, all beaten away slightly unconvincingly. Trying to get spring baggy free on the counter. Bournemouth though, keep possession. They go all the way back to Zamora. Easily press high, ball goes back to Travers. Easily fans, they've kind of sneak a peek over that far wall, seem happy with that. Oh, and the ball's given away sloppily in defence. Oh, oh, inches away from keeping that one, and it would have been one-on-one -on -one and a great opportunity. That all came from Bradshaw's press. He was he was pressing a long way, and that's what the guys on, on top of the uh, roof of the van were cheering. They were cheering his press. He's pressed from defensive midfield right up to the keeper. Yeah, they found the opportunity. They don't press all the time easily, but they pick their moments really well. Anthony now has a little bit of space. You can see they're beginning to find that those pockets in the middle of the park that were not quite there in the first half as Easley now have tired ever so slightly. Just building some possession now. I think Anthony dithered with that one a little bit and easily clear it, but again, it's going to go forward very quickly. Galella advancing with the ball. He's got an option outside, goes inside, a little flick on, push back into the centre. Can easily counter. Oh, turn by Berish there. Absolutely brilliant. Oh, but they've given it away. O'Connell nips in. He's in the box now. Looking for an option. Pass back. Oh, leaned back and could only spoon it over the bar. It's so tricky when the ball comes that close to you as well because you don't have that freedom to swing the leg that necessarily you want. But leaning back in the end, it was always going over. And, and, and that was the thing. Glover had the ball just played just behind him, just a, a foot behind him. But he, he's looked pretty lively since he came on. He has indeed that injection of uh, pace perhaps has given them a little bit more yeah just bit a bit more attacking uh, attacking power I guess and, and Anthony's growing into the game a little bit now as well was playing a little bit deeper but this partnership that's still very early days in this game for Anthony and Glover as a pair but it seems to be going well I, gu I guess my feelings are that as an, as an academy side for a championship club that could still potentially be a Premier League club next year you would think that they would have the better stamina coming into the later stages of the game. Um, but again, it, it will all depend on whether they can keep this lead. Easley can keep this lead. Yeah, the deeper this game goes with Easley keeping that advantage, perhaps, you, you know, the nerves will come into play. It is a cup final, of course. Bournemouth did win one last week, as we mentioned, the Central League Cup final, defeating uh, Carlisle in a game played at St George's Park. Yeah, and they were very much on top in that match. Um, they, they were two very, very, very different match teams there. Lovely run, bisecting the defenders, cut back in. Not cleared effectively, though. Bournemouth still have it. Kilkenny won the free kick that he scored from in the first half. Beautiful free kick it was as well. This time crowded oh. out of it. Oh, Easley, they might, however, come out with the ball. Both Bournemouth defenders crossed over each other. And Easley now, with a bit of pace, get the ball out wide to Baggy. They've got an overlapping run in the end, try to get it inside. Credit Genesini there, he was wise to that little trick. Was pulled back there as well, right in front of the referee. Not gonna get away with that one. Oh no, that, that'll, be a, that'll be a booking, that will. Yeah, you can see the referee has the yellow card in his hand. And Tom Berish is gonna be the second player this game to go into the book. Yeah, and it was, it was, it was a bit cynical, wasn't it? It was a bit of a cynical foul. It was one of those professional ones. You see a flare go past you, you pull him back, you know you're going to take the booking. Yeah, it was about the first time all this half that we'd really seen Eastley beat very far forward. And that left space in behind as uh, now Galella's going to win a free kick as well. That one, the ball wasn't stopped before it was brought back into play. So that will please easily because it's going to give them chance to rest a little bit now. With the ball in the middle of the park with a very dangerous kill, Kenny. Or tries to get it right out wide. Couldn't beat the middleman though, Baggy. This time he's going to lose position. Oh, oh, continues to follow it well, presses well. There's a ball into the middle here. Little played round the corner. Struck from the edge of the box, perhaps. No, well cleared by Ben Greenwood. And as well, 
got a deflection on the way through, so it will be a Bournemouth throw, but there's an Eastleigh player down in the area. Yeah, it was there was it was just needed a bit more power on that pass from Baggy just to just to get it into in front of the, the attacking player there for Eastleigh. But uh, yeah, just looks like he's gonna receive a little bit of treatment here. What we have seen in the last few minutes though is Eastleigh beginning to push forward now. Bournemouth sometimes a little bit exposed at the back, but this might necessarily be a bad thing for Bournemouth because as easily push forward, it means that all of a sudden there's that space that Bournemouth really wanted in the first half but couldn't seem to find. Just seeing on the YouTube uh, page that uh, people are just asking about the score. It is still 2-1 to Eastley. Goals from Baggy and Scorey for Eastley and Kilkenny with a sumptuous free kick for uh, Bournemouth. Very good choice of adjective there, I have do to you say. Like that? Do you like some choice? Oh, good. And it could have been even better for Eastleigh, of course, because they did win a penalty in the first half, but Mark Travers denied Dan Smith. Yeah, I think 3 1 would have been a great lead right now, but I think they're still pretty comfortable at 2 1. And, but, but as you said, tides are changing slightly. Bournemouth are now pushing forward a bit more. And uh, with Glover coming on, just gives them a bit more pace up top because Sadie just wasn't quite in the game with as much pace as Glover has has brought to the game so far. And also O'Connell coming back into the game. Well, with uh, two out of the four games that Bournemouth have played in this competition, I said this season over the past two seasons, both their round three victory over Farnborough and their semi-final win at Moneyfields were both 3-2 victories for Bournemouth. And they have, so they do have the ability to come from behind. They always pose that attacking threat as Travers begins the play here. Here's Galella getting it out wide to Genesini. This one tries to put through Glover. He's got a little bit of space. Players arriving in the box. He goes towards the back stick. But Eastley do a very good job of winning the ball there. Anthony just couldn't trap the ball there. And Greenwood had position, but credit the Eastley players for really harrowing, harrying Bournemouth. And they've got a throw in on the far side here in the Bournemouth half. Great persistence from Tom Blair there. The ball was just slightly out of his grasp, but he was there to get it back it was, it was brilliant it was one minute it was gone next minute he was able to win that ball back this is what you can do when you put a little bit of pressure on you can force those mistakes as this game ticks away with Bournemouth needing a goal you wonder if it will play in their minds they had a relatively comfortable victory in their final last week and the ball is just so, just inching its way down that far <laughs> side here Rich Neal is asking, what minute did Eastley score their second? I can't give you that information, but it was just after. It was literally just after. I would say about the 48th, 49th minute. Yeah, it was maybe even earlier than that. It was it was very, very early into the second half. Much like the first half, Bournemouth like, had a lot of the ball early, but gave away a goal, and then Eastley have been very resolute from that point forward. Not really many clear-cut chances in the second half for Bournemouth. This one sprayed out to Genesini. He's got a player in front of him, Glover, again getting on the ball. He's found those diagonal runs here crowded preventing the path upfield so Bournemouth have to go backwards just didn't have that option in field again they're really using the full width of the pitch here for Genesini Glover makes the run outside but instead the ball is switched across through the center of the park Anthony free on the side there but didn't get the ball and Baggy wins it again yeah just a little bit on the heels there was the uh, was the attacking player for Bournemouth? Wasn't expecting Baggy to spring the ball free. It's a good shot, a good save as well. I think Galella did enough to take the pace off the ball. Eastley players, I think, wanted a penalty, but it looked like a good clean challenge to me. The Eastley players still down, and that one is not going to be a foul advantage, says the referee. Bournemouth can break now. End to end stuff. This is turning into here, Doug, as Bournemouth press for an equaliser and Eastley try and put this game away. Yeah, Dan Smith was unlucky there. He was smacking the ground, and Eastley have got two players down in the other half at the moment. Shot from distance. And Flitney could comfortably watch it wide in the end. Yeah, O'Connell just pushed it too wide, but it looks like uh, Dan Smith and is it Tom Blair potentially? Yeah, a couple of players struggling a little bit from Eastley here. Fatigue beginning to set in for both these sides. Yeah, the frustration by Dan Smith as he was put through there. Just smacking the ground in frustration. So probably a mixture of that and maybe just picking up an injury as he went down. 
and I've said it before and I'll say it again, for all the possession Bournemouth have had, Eastley perhaps have created more, more of the clear-cut chances. <laughs> and again, after after the, looking at the previous results between these two sides, very unexpected this. For about the first time all game, we're seeing the long goal kick, the long kick deep from Travers. And oh, a little bit too adventurous. Kilkenny uh, is everywhere, isn't he? He's all over this pitch. Genesini seeing more of the ball in the second half as well. He's got space to run into, tries to put it through for Anthony. Now easily come forward. It's the pace of this game has really picked up, and it was not slow to begin with. The fans over on the far side making a lot of noise. Yeah, you can tell that it's going into the second half now. The, everything seems to be a little bit louder, a little bit more vocal. There's a bit more urgency in, from both the players on the pitch and the fans and teammates in the stands. Of which there are not many. <laughs> there are all. not many, but it sounds... I mean, you can feel the tension here at AFC Tom. Mike Baggy, who scored the opening goal in this game. Beautiful header that was very early on. Trying to keep the ball alive. Cuts play. Inside. Dan Smith in the centre shoots. It's deflected and deflected into the grasp of Mark Travers. Never looked like that getting past him, really. I think it probably helped Travers because it came to a really nice, comfortable height to catch it. Yeah, and again, the deflection just taking the pace out of the ball. Sometimes you see the deflection just leave the goalkeeper completely wrong footed. But that one was a fortunate one for Travers. This one tried to play it down oh, on the pass. Run. Lovely ball to Glover. Back to Genesini. It's not really that many players in the box. There's what, four, five Eastley shirts compared to one for Bournemouth. Genesini trying to keep the ball going. Oh, tried to sneak a little one through, but no one was ready for it. And it goes out for an Eastley free kick. You see Bournemouth beginning to get a little bit frustrated, perhaps. Yeah, again, Jaden Anthony, Anthony with the uh, misplaced pass. He, you can tell he's getting frustrated. He came into the game quite well in the second half but now he's, his performance just dropping off. I wouldn't be surprised if they look to change it up again, potentially. It's always interesting how and when you use the substitutions. And none of the uh, Bournemouth subs warming up at the moment and none of the Eastley subs warming up either. Oh, there, yeah, we have got some Eastley subs warming up at the moment. Just doing some light stretches down to our left. gillella has got that one and passes it back to Travers. Travers not <laughs> taking any chances with that one, punted high into the Hampshire sky. Well, a bit of a sandwich, that wasn't it? Uh, a bit, a bit like my sandwiches, yeah. All the way up <laughs> and no distance on it. Here we go. Here's Anthony. Looks to spray a ball forward. Well won, in fact. But the header goes behind. Something a little bit different there. Putting a little bit of loft on that one, but couldn't quite bring it down. Again, see another easy player trying to stretch themselves off. I think if Bournemouth can keep up this intensity, they will find gaps. Flitney puts the ball on that corner of his six yard box. Again, <laughs> there's, a, there's no doubt about what the plan here is going to be, is there, Doug? <laughs> I think I know where the ball's going. And Flitney duly delivers. The first ball's knocked on. A little bit of head tennis in the middle of the park here. Who is going to end up with the ball on the ground? It's Zamora and wins the throw in from their Eastley counterpart. That one spins behind, so I think we're going to get a fresh ball here. Yeah, we don't have the multi ball system in place tonight with uh, all, the, all the ball boys and girls around the outside. We uh, just have the fourth official with a bag. Our, our fourth official tonight, Marcus Carmichael. Yeah, he's just got a bag of balls, and that's it, really. I mean, what more do you need? Indeed. Here we go. This is a this is a time and space. Uh, cultures. Yeah, I can play this comfortably on the floor. They say cultured. I thought it was his right foot. I thought culture was an adjective exclusively used for players' left foot. Uh, well, they they have more culture. Let's put it that way. But it's no. just one of the, it's just one of those things, isn't it? It's always a cultured left foot. Yeah, that's very. That's a good point. That some of the Bournemouth uh, subs just heading out for a little stretch and I, I wouldn't be surprised if they look to change things up now. Maybe, maybe Jaden Anthony, we'll have to see. 
because Bournemouth, as it stands, need to find at least one more goal to keep this alive. Oh. Anthony with a stinging shot. Well, that was a commentator's curse, if I've ever seen one. Yeah, put the, put the reverse mockers on him there. Flitney with a very strong hand to palm it over the bar. That had a lot of fizz behind it. And there is going to be a substitution here, but it's Eastley who are making the change. Harris Felton is going to be the player who comes on. Tom Blair is going to be the player who comes off. Put in a hell of a shift tonight, as all the Eastley players had. So maybe just getting a little bit of fresh legs on here as well. I'm also wondering whether there's this is just the uh, repercussions from his injury. He does seem to be very slightly hobbling off. Yeah, it's walking off a little bit gingerly. No real problems, but just as you say, maybe protecting a player who's a little bit jaded perhaps and injecting a little bit of pace perhaps to hit Bournemouth on the counter making a substitution before the corner though can sometimes be dicey it's one of the things that traditional wisdom is says you don't do because players often aren't entirely sure of their assignments very true Greenwood both arms in the air ready to deliver the set piece with his cultured left foot very good here we go into the box Oh, headed down by an Eastley player who might go behind for another corner. Kept alive. It's. Uh, I'm not entirely sure what's gone on there. I think a free kick in the box. Eastley seemed ready for it before it eventually before it actually arrived. So Eastley now will get a goal kick, flit or a free kick. Either way, Flitney's got the ball in his hands, taking his time as you would do. Two one up. Yeah, he's taking as much time as he, he can, really. I wasn't sure what happened there. I think the ball had just, just run out. And when it, uh, whether it was Genesini or uh, Glover, just couldn't get there in time. By the way, it's the traditional, I say the traditional, the customary Eastley way this game, punting the long ball clear from the goal. Not quite full-on time-wasting tactics now for Eastley, but slowing the game down probably benefits them both in terms of running that clock and also just trying not to expend that energy. So you've got that little bit left in the tank for the end of the game. It is dangerous to, it's a dangerous tactic to slow the game too much with only a one-goal lead. Here we go, the ball pinged down the flanks. That's really well read in the air and really well won. They've got a player on the overnap here. Bournemouth looking for a ball into the box. Finds the player, good block, still alive. And in the end, it's going to go behind goal kick. for a goal kick. Oh, had a couple of bites of the cherry there, did Bournemouth. No, that pun actually not intended that time. Yeah, it was a superb touch from Zamora from that long ball when he had uh, Anthony just on the overlap. I, I'm surprised that Ryan Glover couldn't do better with it blocked but then Genesini had no chance he was just just closed down very quickly yeah on them so quickly and credit the easy defenders getting a very strong almost cricket style long barrier block yeah. in the way and Glover maybe had the time to take an extra touch but of course high insight is 2020 this ball's gone back into the air off the head of Galella and eventually it comes down to Bournemouth feet they've got Zamora now see Anthony making the run in front and eventually Anthony does get the ball He's trying to drive forward, isn't he? He's trying to take players on, but he's just doing too much. Yeah, that time a little bit far away, and Easley were there to win it. Oh, slips on the far side, tries to keep the ball. Yeah, Tom Barish couldn't keep his feet, could he? No, and in the end, Bournemouth have a chance to counter here. Glover turns it round the corner first time, nice ball, and no nonsense defending. Slides in, clears it, but Bournemouth very much on the aggressive at the moment. Kilkenny here, he's been brilliant tonight, but he's just, he haven't, we haven't spoken about him much for the last few minutes. It's always the way it's difficult to play 100% all game, because there are going to be phases when other players will have more of the ball. Glover tries to win the header, was there a deflection on the way through? The referee says no, it's another Eastley goal kick. Yeah, just couldn't get, he hasn't got the height really to, to compete with those centre-backs there, Glover, but... He, he made a valiant effort to get that. I will say, East, uh, Eastley are defending well, but Bournemouth are very much. You can tell this is a sustained spell of pressure. When we've had these in the game before, though, Bournemouth have been caught napping at the back occasionally. So maybe Eastley will be thinking, if they can win the ball, they've got that space for the counter. Punted clear. Getting high up in the sky. Bournemouth seem to be winning oh. the second balls. Well brought down by O'Connell. Tries to play a searching ball forward. 
and Bournemouth win a throw in deep in Eastleigh territory here. Goal score, Ben Scorey just, just gets rid of it. There was no need to mess around with it, especially as he had uh, Anthony bearing down on him. But maybe you think with Eastleigh, four against one, maybe two Bournemouth players there. Maybe got a bit more time than that. And it's going to be another throw to Bournemouth deep, deep by that corner. But Anthony's taking it and he's really out wide and he's not able to affect the game from there. They're trying to take it quickly before Eastleigh have a chance to set themselves, get it in position with that low block. 11 men behind the ball at the moment for Eastleigh. And why not when you're 2-1 up? Yeah, and they've now got they've now got a, uh, number 15, the sub, Harris Felton, just sitting deeper now. So it's almost like a 4-1-4-1 formation now, with uh, Dan Smith just the only lone man up there. I'm imagining that's what brought the sub on. Yeah, changing the shape perhaps, go a little bit more defensive, try and protect that lead. As time ticks down in this game, that's a slightly sloppy pass. Pressure. Yeah, I can, tell. can Bournemouth win it back? Baggy has it. Well, it's still around that area. It's not easy for Eastleigh. And Flitney has no qualms about getting it very, very deep. And the flag goes up for offside. Haven't actually seen many offside calls this game. No, no, the players have been pretty, pretty good at keeping in their position. The assistant referees for this game, Tom Berry and Steve Hawkes, done a very good job running the lines. It's often a thankless task. Yeah, but especially in the rain earlier. Yeah, and it's got a, there's a little bit of nip in the air, a little bit of bite in the air. So, uh, yeah, these fingerless gloves are coming to good use. Here we go, Bournemouth try to push forward once more. They've got an overlapping ball. Greenwood goes back to Anthony. Into feet. Let's go, Kenny. Oh, just slightly too strong for Genesini. There was the space for that ball, but couldn't quite get that little deft touch required. Are we getting towards the territory of uh, wondering whether it's not going to be Bournemouth tonight? Just nothing quite coming off for them at the moment. Yeah, full credit to Eastleigh. They've defended strongly in this game. The one Bournemouth goal coming from a delectable free kick from the boot of Kilkenny, a free kick which, they, of course, he won himself with an astonishingly good control of the ball out of the air. But that has really been the only true bit of quality, perhaps, from Bournemouth on the day, or I say day, on the night it is now. The sun disappearing behind the horizon. And perhaps Bournemouth's ho hopes disappearing as well now, with easily still 2-1 up as the game ticks away, but they win a throw in there. Again, they see they want to get it moving quickly. Anthony wins the ball, plays it down, goes all the way back to Genesini. No, not a calm pass into yeah, the centre. Sprayed out wide now to Greenwood. Yeah, it was. He didn't have a massive gap to get it through to the to the uh, central defenders, but he was able to get it away. And look how wide he is now out, out here, right on the touchline. Yeah, they're really trying to stretch them horizontally as well as vertically. Well, that's a slightly bit of sloppy bit of control, and, and easily a vulnerable. Easily have a chance to hit him on the counter. I, oh, I don't know about that. Raising towards fever pitch here at Snow Stadium. Nice ball down the flank. They do like to overload that left side with players like Zamora, like Greenwood, like Anthony. Oh, good save from Flitney, ball's not dead yet. Shot from distance oh. and it was not far wide. Driven with pace and low on the ground, a real daisy cutter and Flitney would be very happy to see it bounce off the advertising sorting behind the goal. There might be just a little bit of a, a lag just going on on the YouTube channel, just, uh, just so you know it is still 2-1. Eastley are still ahead 2-1. And time rapidly ticking away on Bournemouth here. It was only just wide from where we were. We were right behind that. Gavin Kilkenny's only just put it a foot or so wide. But Bournemouth really pushing for the equaliser here, and why not? If the game is tied and Bournemouth do manage to get that goal back, and after 19 minutes, we go straight to penalties here tonight. But of course, before that happens, Bournemouth do have to find that equalising goal. And, and you, you do wonder where it's going to come from. You think probably Ryan Glover if he gets the opportunity, because he has looked very lively. And he's looking to come and collect the ball now. Even if we haven't necessarily seen it consistently tonight, Bournemouth do have that quality. Good ball in from Glover. And it is booted behind by the substitute Harris Felton. Bournemouth taking it quickly. Before Eastleigh is set, lofted ball in. Flitney calls it. And strong hands 
kneels down on the ball as well. Just taking his time there. He knew that if he got that ball, that it would give his players a breather. And also, it would just waste a few precious seconds for Eastley here. It's a wily veteran move, I think it is. Yeah, I think he knows exactly what he's doing there after many years. He's, I, he's 36, so he's definitely been around around the footballing game. Looking quite grizzled as well with that, with that, I must admit, very handsome beard. Uh, lockdown beard, I think. Yeah, I know, I can fully empathise with that. Bournemouth driving forward now, Zamora has real pace, and he beat a few Bournemouth, uh, easily defenders before it was eventually hoiked clear. Everyone's behind the ball. Oh, lovely, Beautiful. lovely ball brought down with a plum as well by O'Connell, but doesn't see the space inside. Referee is very close to that one. Here's Glover, maybe trying to put it in, hang it up, but Baggy, the ball hits him and it will deflect for a corner in yeah. the end. I think there was a hint of handball there potentially by Baggy, but I don't think it was enough to, uh, or as clear cut, to uh, make it give the foul. And Bournemouth have sent the keeper up. Mark Travers is in the area. He has scored in his professional career before, although that one was from a kick from within their own half as the ref, as the fourth official's board goes up. Three minutes of injury time here. Headed by Travers, and Travers has equalised for Bournemouth. Unbelievable scenes. Substitutes mob the keeper, and why the hell not? You somehow, you can tell Mark Travers, he's got an eye for goal. But what have we just seen, Benji? You said that he had scored. Oh, that, well, that's not the commentator's curse at all. That is the commentator's grace. And I'll tell you what, it was some header as well because it was very close but you've to got Ross to say, Whitney. But you've got to say, look at the height of him in comparison to the other players. He's always going to win a, a win an aerial challenge there. And you wonder if, you know, it was intentional from the delivery, trying to pick out the tallest man on the pitch, not that you can hardly miss him with that luminous orange jersey, but what a header. It wasn't too far away from Flitney. A little bit of pressure from a Bournemouth player there as well, but it was hit with such, like a bullet header, that before Flitney almost had time to react, it was already nestled in the back of the net, and so we're, we're only a couple of minutes away now from a penalty shootout. Two and a, well, two and a bit minutes away from a penalty shootout, and for so long it seemed like Eastley were going to be able to keep hold of it, And but of course, Bournemouth have got the ball here, and they've still got a chance. But they've won two games in this tournament, 3-2 already. Could there be another late twist in the tail? Glover tried to bring it down. Flitney, though, will take all the time in the world and eventually waits for Glover to advance before picking it up. I did say that oh, there is such quality in the Bournemouth side that any player could get the equaliser. Having said that, <laughs> did not necessarily expect it to be Mark Travers, but hey, goal's a goal. Yeah, and I think the thing is, is that, it, that was very interesting. Flitney was taking his time there. You wonder whether, because of the, uh, the incredible save that he made in the uh, penalty shootout against Saints in the uh, semi-final, you wonder whether he wants to take the game to penalties. Well, it's interesting because Mark Travers, of course, not just, has done it at both, I say at both ends, it did happen in the same goal, but as well as scoring, did save a penalty in the first half from Dan Smith. So here we go, punted clear this time from the equaliser, Mark Travers. Did not necessarily <laughs> think I'd be saying that. We talked about that he'd scored before, but uh, still did not expect it to happen. Here's Zamora trying to play it inside. It might break for Bournemouth, not quite, but they're still high up the pitch. They've still got it booted towards this near side. It's going to go comfortably over the head of Baggy. Genesini takes it quickly. Back to O'Connell. O'Connell, oh, lovely lofted ball down the side for Genesini. Puts the cross in again, but there's no Mark Travers on the end of it this time. Zamora advanced, pulls down on the volley, charge down, oh, strong Berish. block from Tom Berish. I've got to say, like, this is this is turned into a really exciting game towards the end here. You can keep your line of duty. This is all the drama I need. Oh, I love it. And they've still got the ball. Oh, challenge skipped, shot from distance, and Flitney was not troubled by that one at all. I don't want to preempt anything, but I have just drawn up a penalties box on my paper. Maybe a bit preemptive, but we shall see. We're probably no much more than not much more than a minute away. Well, Bournemouth were two-one down in an earlier game in this competition at about the 85th minute, and they did not only find the equaliser but the winning goal before it went to the shootout. And also in the semi-final, of course, they won 3-2 to get here, and but it is not a penalty today. shootout. It will be the dreaded penalty shootout, the way to decide the teams. 
Well, I mean, only fitting of what has been a scintillating affair. Both sides have had their spells. And in the end, some real quality from both sides. Lovely cushioned header from Baggy for the opener before Kilkenny won a free kick. I, 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 de I as you said, I never thought this would happen, but we've ha we've gone to a penalty shootout after a goalkeeper scores a goal. It is unbelievable. The unbelievable. magic of the cup, magic yeah. of the cup, Doug. And 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 there we were pre-game thinking that this was going to be a, a not a non a non-game really. We thought that Bournemouth would walk it, but this Eastleigh side that has arguably less experience than the one that played in the semi-final. It, it has, it's taken it all the way to a to penalty shoot, shootout and, and we're four minutes away from winning it. And, you know, two goalkeepers in penalty saving form. Of course, Ross Flintley with a strong save in their semi-final victory over Southampton. And Mark Travers has already done the business today as well. I wonder if you're Mark Travers. Do you have the feeling of this is my night? Do you step up to take it? We have seen some very strong goalkeeping penalty takers through the years. Think about Ricardo for Portugal many yeah, years ago. Rogério Kenny for uh, Brazil as well. He was, I, I, if I'm honest, I think, I think in a penalty shootout, it's always going to be a keeper that's going to make their name. So I, I wouldn't be surprised if either Ross Flitney, who, as we said, saved that penalty in the last round, or <laughs> the star of the night already, Mark Travers, steps up to either take take a penalty or just make a name by saving one so the question is here who do you turn to and what style do you do for the penalties because various penalty takers have different techniques some wait till they see the keeper move and then place it in the opposite direction some players choose to pick a spot and just hit it with power do you go for the cheeky little penenka chip down the middle there's so many options and in okay. the end who takes it it's, it's often it's just down to confidence really isn't it okay well put it this way like I played a little bit in the past not much and not to a high level my I was always told you pick your spot before you start your walk from the halfway line because if you don't if you're thinking about it on your walk you're bound to change your mind pick that spot and hit it hard so of the uh, of the uh of the penalty takers in that semi-final win over Southampton for Eastley, only one of them is in the squad today and they are on the pitch number eight Tom Berish uh, he's bound to take one. You would think he's bound to take one of the five. But again, we've also got that thing of it could go to sudden death. So if if, it, if you aren't a regular football watcher, if it is level after five penalties each, it does go to sudden death. It, it's an awful way to win it, awful way to lose it. Yeah, and indeed, as we mentioned, Berish was the only player currently playing who scored in that semi-final shootout was uh, the third penalty taker. Every penalty taker for Eastleigh put their penalty in the back of the net. And it looks like with uh, Travers in goal, perhaps oh, Flitney's uh, has re-emerged from the tunnel. <laughs> so I don't know what they were uh, what they were doing in yeah. there. Maybe, maybe getting the lucky gloves out. Either the lucky gloves or maybe just, uh, re just relieving himself. Just a comfort break. Yes. So here we go, Flitney and Gilella engaged with the referee so, so there will be the toss of the coin of course to decide who takes first i believe it's going to be from the car park end um and it is going to be from the car park end is that the proper name for it um i don't know but, but it's I'm the end with the car it's the, the end with the car park um so and i think i think this is going to be uh, well what a fitting end to a, a thoroughly enjoyable match and a season like no other oh uh, it it's it's apt. It what was apt. the state you had you had in the opener? Six hundred and thirty days. Six hundred and thirty days since the first match of this tournament. Yeah. And um, what a way to end it! What a way to end it! And it is going to be Keelan O'Connell with the first penalty for Bournemouth. So Ross Flitney tries to make himself big in the centre of the goal for Eastley. Hush comes over the stadium. O'Connell. Begins his run up. Great penalty. What a penalty. Hit with real force. Flitney went the wrong way, but even if he'd guessed right, I don't know if he'd got a hand to it either. Was struck firm, struck true, and Bournemouth strike first. They are 1 0 up in the shootout. And now it's going to be Eastley's number four, Dan Bradshaw. He's had a good game, played very well in the 90 minutes. Can he continue that from the penalty spot? Just 12 yards away from that goal line. Obviously, defenders not necessarily your first penalty takers, but do you put your penalty takers at the front of the lineup or do you wait and hold them back? Here we go. 
shot and Travers Saved. beats it away. Two strong hands. It was not a bad penalty, but Travers guessed right and he emphatically got rid of it. You, you've got to think he's buoyant. He's going to be buoyant after that goal that he scored in normal time. <laughs> I can't believe that he scored the equaliser. <laughs> it does feel very strange saying it, doesn't it? Football's a funny old game, it isn't is. it? But uh, you did say, as he came up for this uh, for that corner, that he had scored a goal before. So I guess we should have expected it. Well, I don't know about that one, Chief. <laughs> <laughs> Here we go. Gavin Kilkenny, who perhaps has been the best player on the park for either side today, already scored from a set piece. A delicious free kick. Takes up, strikes it with the right foot. Sends Good Flitney goal. the wrong way. But what a penalty again. Right in the corner. Not uh, a decent height, but again hit true and there was nothing that Flitney could do perhaps even if he had gone the right way so Bournemouth now 2-0 up they've taken two easily taken just the one as Tom Berish who we mentioned did score in the semi-final steps up here as well do wonder as well if we'll see Dan Smith who missed the penalty in normal time had it saved by Mark Travers so Travers has now faced two penalties and has now saved two penalties can he make it three from three so here goes Tom Berish he runs up Oh, what an emphatic finish that is. Right into the top corner. That is going to look great from the goal, uh, the, the camera behind the goal there. Hit high and hit hard, and there was nothing Travers could do about it. So we are 2-1 here in the Men's Senior Cup Final. Penalty shootout. It was 2-0 at the end of normal time, and now it's going to be Jaden Anthony with... Bournemouth's third penalty, 2-1 currently. Haven't seen him in his sparkling best so far this game, but if he can hammer this home, that won't matter one jot. <laughs> Referee blows his whistle. Slow run up, oh, sends the keeper the wrong way. As cool as the other side of the pillow is Jaden Anthony. Oh, I love it. I think that it's somewhat nonchalant, wasn't it? Considering the game that he's had, he's not been on form, as you said. He looked very frustrated, but for him to have the confidence to step up, and it's now going to be number nine, Dan Smith. So here Dan we go. Dan Smith for, for Eastley to try and get back into this penalty shootout. The mind games, the mind games that must be going on. Travers saved a penalty in the first half, went to his right and got a hand on it. Where does Dan Smith go? Oh, oh what a penalty. penalty. If he put it there in regulation, Eastley could have won it. As it is, oh. Travers went the right way, but nothing he could do again. Had that loft on it to take it above the goalkeeper's despairing dive. That is cruel commentary from you. I mean, but of course, if they had scored, the game could have gone, could have Very played true. out totally differently. Bournemouth could have pressed a bit earlier. Who knows? And now it's Brooklyn Ge uh, Genesini. He has had a stunning game tonight out on the right-hand side. But can he make it 4-2 in the penalty shootout? Put in a hell of a shift tonight. That would give them match point. Oh, it's a great penalty. Again, hit strong, hit very hard. And if but potentially was savable if Flitney went the right way. But every penalty is a good penalty if it goes in the back of the net at the end of the day. And now we're, we're down to the horrible position here. It is Callum Bowen walking forward, number two for Eastley. If he misses, the cup is Bournemouth's. So much weight on his shoulders. Travers. Bounces on the spot. Oh, great oh what penalty. a penalty. Hard, you, relatively down the middle, but the keeper was always going to put the dive in. You would never know that that was, that was, had so much riding on it. This is what you do. Can you shut out all the noise? I say all the noise, obviously, with no fans in the stadium. It's not quite as bouncing as perhaps it would otherwise be, but put the blinders on, so to speak. Just focus on the one thing that you've got to do, and that's beating the man in front of you. And we are back to the same position. If Corey Jordan scores for Bournemouth, he wins them the cup. Quite a long run up straight from the edge of the box. Shoots. Oh. Bournemouth win! A hammered penalty into the top corner. Nothing Flitney could do. And Bournemouth have made it two trophies in the space of a week. Bournemouth are the Hampshire men's FA Senior Cup winners. Oh. Look at the celebrations. The, the Eastley boys look so disappointed. It was lovely to see uh, Keelan O'Connell before going over and celebrating, just going over to the Eastley boys and 
giving them his condolences, but he will not be bothered one iota. This is going to feel brilliant after that match. This is a night that will live long in the memory for all who played and all who witnessed this, either here in the stands at Snow Stadium or on the live stream as well. And there they are, they're just announcing it into the ground. They're bringing out the table with all the little medals on. What a game, I know. what a game. And it, it's just important, just just at this moment, just to have a, a mention for the sponsors of tonight, BSA Regal. Thank you very much, guys, for sponsoring such a fantastic football match. It's been, it's been a hell of a game. And in the end, perhaps penalties was the only way to decide this game. Yeah. I mean, how do you pick a man of, man of the match out of that? I don't, I don't know if you can. I think, for me, Gavin Kilkenny, maybe Jordan Zamora, um, either of them could have. I think we're going to go down to pitch side to speak to the winning manager. Uh, I think Harrison and Fab have got them there. That great match, a victory to Bournemouth on penalties against Easley. We're here with Sean Cook, the manager of AFC Bournemouth. Congratulations! Thank you. What a game has been, and what do you feel right now? Uh, pleased for the boys. Uh, it's nice for them to win two trophies uh, in the space of a week. Um, hard to process it all at the moment because there's a lot of things we could have done better, and Travs has come to our rescue in more ways than one. Um, but you know, the boys found a way to win. So credit to them. Easley had a very solid defence. They went ahead and Bournemouth managed to pull it back each time. Mm. Uh, what's the credit towards the boys for getting into that game and not letting themselves get dragged out? Well, that's what they do. You know, they, um, they never give up. You know, reflecting on it, we had enough chances to, to be outside and go and win the game, but we didn't take them. Uh, it's been the story of our games recently. We've scored, uh, we've created a lot of chances just to score two goals in the last few games. But um, yeah, overall, I'm really pleased with them. They deserve it. Two cups in, in the space of a week. How proud are you as their manager? Yeah, really proud. Um, and, and you know, the other <coughs> last week, it was, it was pure dominance from start to finish. Today, Eastley made it really difficult for us, and there was a lot of struggles for us through the game. Um, but for them to persevere as we said um, and then go through and show show their nerve to score every penalty was credit to them well thank you very much for your time thank Sean you. uh, best best of luck out there uh, and congratulations thank, for you, very much. thank you very Cheers, much thank you very much so that was Sean Cooper there on their victory on this half, on the Hampshire FA Senior Cup, which is now theirs, the second cup in a week. Harrison, what, what a game we just witnessed. It looked like Easley had run away with it towards the last couple of minutes until the goalkeeper stepped forward and from out of nowhere just pulled it back. Look, I'm absolutely speechless. I stood there for about 10 minutes and I was just contemplating. What, what did we just watch? I, I couldn't believe my eyes. But I said it was going to be a tight second half. I said Eastfield need to stick in there. They need to keep doing their roles, keep doing their jobs. And they did fair play to them. Eastley are unlucky tonight. Very unlucky. They scored a really good goal at the start of the second half from Ben Scorey. And then they held out. Look, Bournemouth had most of the ball this second half. And oh, was it always going to come? Look, I don't think this cup should have AFC Bournemouth's name on it. I think it should have Mark Travers's name on it because what an outstanding performance. Of all my years watching football, I don't think I've seen a goalkeeper take the spotlight quite like that. He's just he's come up for the corner, come up for the corner in the 90th minute and he's leapt like an absolute salmon. Oh, and it's just it's the cleanest purchase of a header you I think you'll see in football. Yeah. It's absolutely phenomenal. I mean, credit, credit to Isley, they, they, they took the game to Bournemouth, they played it on the card, somehow managed to take take the game away from Bournemouth and unluck, they were just unlucky in the end. What, what, if you were the manager, what, what would you be saying to those players? Look, they're unfortunate, they're unfortunate tonight, but um, look, Isley, their day will come, uh, but today belongs to Mark Travers, definitely. Celebrations here. Celebrations here at the back where AFC Bournemouth have won the second successive cup of the week, preparing for the uh, cup celebrations. So as the players just coming up to receive the, their medals and the cups.
So we're just going to try and move forward, find a little space so that we can see a little bit more. The players right there receiving their, their set. Well, in, in football, the, you, you, would, you would call it what? The loser's medal on this occasion. Yeah, I mean, it, it, won't, it won't be nice for these Eastleigh players. They worked hard tonight, um, especially their defence. The defence was solid and they worked... They worked themselves to the bone. Um, they didn't have many opportunities the second half, um, but they, they held in there until the 90th minute. And it look, it took the goalkeeper to score. Let's uh, let's just say that. Yeah, no, definitely. And you see Borvin now walking up to us to receive to receive their their medals and their cup, second second successive cup of the week after winning the national cup. Now the senior cup to add. To their trophy coming in. What's an into the season for, for AFC Bournemouth Harrison? Yeah, obviously the, the Bournemouth players are going to be absolutely overjoyed with this. Um, just to, to win one, one trophy in such a stop start season is one thing, but two trophies in a week is absolutely phenomenal. And there we have it, a captain number two played a phenomenal game, took his team to a victory. About to lift the cup, and they are the champions of the Hampshire FA Cup winners 2019-2020. Cool. There we go, another, another cup final play. Yeah. Another cup final played, and we are pretty sure that those that those celebrations will continue towards the end of the day. There's that cup. Mark, I was, I was just saying that uh, I don't think that the cup should have AFC Bournemouth's name on it. I think it should have your name. What a performance. Have you ever scored a header like that? Nah, to be honest, trying practice and training with the lads and the goalkeepers, but never, never as good as that, to be honest. Uh, a lot of practice, but no, I don't know what happened, to be honest. Just ran across the, the front post and luckily landed straight in my head. So. I mean... I think uh, Bournemouth would have ruined their chances if you didn't score that. There were, you had plenty of chances throughout the game and some of them should have been put away. Are you going to knock on the manager's door and say, look, give me a go up front next week? <laughs> no, nah, better off staying in goal. I think, I think it was a once-off. But um, no, yeah, as you said, we have a few chances in the first half. I think um, EC played well second half, got the 2-1 lead. I was like to the last minute we got back into it. But no, I think it was a tight contest and you know, it was, it was just... Um, lucky on the day we, we end up winning. Yeah. Thank you very much. I'll leave you go and enjoy the celebrations with your team. Phenomenal evening here at the Snow Sports Stadium in Totten. In most days, wow, what a performance, what, what goals that we've had on show. It, 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 it was just goals galore all around. We've, we've seen a, a beautiful free kick from outside the box. We've seen a beautiful half volley. We've seen the goalkeeper rising like a salmon <laughs> at the end. I didn't even see him come they, up, they did you? have seen your jump when that goalkeeper just scored. Wow. <laughs> what a reaction. I mean, it, was, it just came out of nowhere. And it, it completely turned the head on this game. We thought it was done and dusted up to all those last few minutes and yeah. it just changed around in, in a couple of seconds. I think everybody here thought this is, this is Eastleigh's game. There was a couple of blocks on the line. The goalkeeper made a couple of terrific saves. And then obviously uh, it's, it's not over until the goalkeeper scores a header. <laughs> well, it definitely isn't. Uh, I'm afraid that is all we have time for. The celebrations will continue to go on for the rest of the night and probably for the rest of the week for these players. Commiserations to Eastleigh. They pulled up such a great performance. They were just unlucky at the end. And uh, congratulations to FC Bournemouth and staff and the players. And of course, a huge thank you for watching the game. A huge thank you to all the staff here. Harrison Reed, what a pleasure. A thank you to everyone involved, our commentators out there, uh, our floor managers, everyone in social media, and of course, Solent University put, putting all of this together at the end. So it's been a pleasure. Fabian Vera for Solent Sport News. We'll catch you up on the next Senior Cup game. Thank you. <laughs>